My guest this morning has been a regular on this program for a long time, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Good morning to you, Kevin. Uh, good morning, Jack. Kevin is the founder of Health Watch USA, and we are bringing back a guest we had some time ago. And with that said, uh, Kevin, introduce her to our audience, please. So it's our pleasure, my pleasure, to introduce Rosemary Gibson. She is a senior advisor at the Hastings Center and a nationally renowned award-winning author. She's written a multitude of books on health care policy, including The Treatment Trap, Medicare Meltdown, and The Wall of Silence. In 2014, she was the recipient of the highest honor from the American Writers Association. In her latest book, China Rx, this book exposed the risks of the United States' dependence on China for its medication. And we discussed this book approximately a year ago. And I'm really proud to say that we were one of the first news outlets in the nation to take up this topic. And recently, it spawned just a flurry of attention, including a congressional hearing, reports in Forbes, Bloomberg, segment on NBC Nightly News, and this is becoming more and more of a problem, and we're finding more and more contaminants, dangerous contaminants in these drugs. And so at this time, I'd like to let Rosemary Gibson tell us a little bit about what's been going on and the importance of the work that she's been doing. Hey, Rosemary. Uh, Jack and Dr. Cavanaugh, thank you so much for having me back. It's a real pleasure. I remember so well when you were with us before, and I... I remember coming away from that show thinking, as I said this morning, this is an important a bunch of information, and obviously a lot of other people agree with that. Well, it's good to know because it's good for our country that we know. You know. These are the medicines that are being used by presidents and members of Congress. They're used by our military, by veterans, and these are the medicines found in corner drug stores and pharmacies and supermarkets and big box stores. And we're dependent on China for so many of the ingredients in them. And now China's sending us generic drugs made in China by their companies, and nobody knows. And I wrote a book on this called China RX, and it broke the story. And I, it's heartening to see that uh, people are seeing this as a national security issue and really a challenge for our health. And of course, many people are getting notices that they are blood pressure medicines and other medicines are being recalled because of, they can contain carcinogens. It's a terrible thing that that happened, but it really puts the issue out there. And in that case, the Chinese, a Chinese company was really the biggest perpetrator in not assuring the quality of medicines that were coming to America. Now, these are, are they all generics? Well, Jack, I looked, yeah, I looked at generic drugs, which are 90% of the medicines that we take. Okay. And that's where we really have a problem. You know, thousands, of, thousands of our medicines depend on ingredients from China. They're also over it the, is shocking. Over the counter medications that we would all know, right? Oh, that's exactly right, like vitamins. We used to make vitamins here, the ascorbic acid and vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Now China basically controls the world supply of the ingredients to make vitamins and antibiotics. I think that's the most troubling thing. Isn't it remarkable that the United States can't even make penicillin anymore? Isn't it remarkable? The last penicillin plant closed in the United States in 2004, and I write in China Rx how that happened. It's an amazing story. Chinese companies got together, sold it, at a very low price on the global market, and that drove all the U.S. companies out of business, all the companies in Europe out of business, and all the companies even in India. And then once China got control over that global market for penicillin, it raised the price. Wow. This is, this is the game plan that China uses. Jack, this is absolutely huge. The amount of drugs that China actually makes may not be a huge percentage, it may be 15, 20 percent, but as much as 80 percent of the drugs that we take have the precursors which are made in China. And in the manufacturing process, some of these precursors are also being contaminated with, and this has to do with the manufacturing contaminant by a uh, significant carcinogen, even though it is at low levels, it's still at a level of concern. 
and this carcinogen uh, is called nitrosodium ethylamine or NDMA. That's, I guess that's why they call it MDMA. And it's also been found in name brand drugs such as Valsartan, which is taken for blood pressure. And the same carcinogen has been recently reported just a week or so ago to be found in Zantac, which is a an acid. So this is a huge problem of having these drugs being dependent upon manufacturing in China. And it also, I think, relates to the trade war and what's going on and will this be used as a lever against the United States to try to uh, budge us off of our uh, position trying to correct some of the inequities that we're seeing in trading. You know, I think we're a little bit spoiled in this country in as much as we feel like, well, the FDA has our backs. Why don't they in this regard? Well, Jack, this is a, a really great question. Here's what happened with the blood pressure medicines. When the FDA went into a, a plant in China, they found that the company making the core ingredient for this blood pressure medicine, Valsartan, the company knew it had a problem, that the product wasn't meeting the specifications and how it was being made. Instead of going back and looking at what was causing the problem, they kept on producing it. They kept on sending a substandard drug to the United States that had up to 200 times the acceptable limit of a carcinogen mm. in a blood pressure medicine per pill. And that's why the FDA went in and then banned everything from that plant in China. So this is how we got here. We have to have ethical, professional people making our medicines and we have to appreciate that what it takes to make them the right way. And so what China is doing is by undercutting everybody on price, it's driving out the good guys. It's driving out the people who want to make our medicines the way we're used to. Mm -hmm. And as for a trade war, I'll tell you, we let penicillin leave this country and antibiotic manufacturing. In my view, we've been in a trade war for a very long time and we did nothing about it. Now is the first time that people are starting to say, hey, wait a minute, what are we doing with billions in intellectual property theft and this type of cheating in the marketplace? It really is an unlevel playing field because American companies, they're not competing with other companies in China. They're competing with the Chinese government. They can subsidize them to no end. So we've got to come up with a game plan. China has a plan. We have no plan. I'm grateful that China RX the book is getting attention that this subject deserves and that we come up with a plan to fix this. We better fix it fast. What you, how did you first learn about this, Rosemary? And, and what did you immediately say, I got to do something about this? Well, yeah, Jack, I was looking to write another book and I wanted to write something that's of importance to all of us. And I just stumbled on this and I kept looking and researching and I thought, oh my goodness, nobody knows this. I kept going deeper and deeper, and it was shocking. And so that's why I put together China RX, and I wrote it in a way that you know, all of us can, can read it, because it's so important. And it starts out with a story of a 46-year-old physician who was trained at Johns Hopkins who walked into a prominent hospital, and 24 hours later, he was in multiple organ failure. And that's after he had gotten very large doses of a really important medicine called heparin, it turned out to be uh, contaminated with a fake substitute for its ingredient in China. And hundreds of Americans died. And this gentleman, unfortunately, uh, passed away uh, several months later, a horrific death. So this is very real, but it's been hidden from us. And it's about time that we all understand what's going on with something so important as our medicine. And you have gotten the attention of Congress, or your book has anyway, right? Well, I'm really um, honored that the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, which is a group of commissioners appointed by bipartisan by members of Congress, held a hearing on July 31st, where it was the first time that this story came out. And a member of the uh, Defense Department um, testified, and it was very clear that uh, the, the DOD uh, views dependence on China ingredients as a security threat. Because remember, our military is getting these products from China also. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then I was uh, had the privilege of talking about the significance of this. And China's dominance is global. It's not just us. Even the Netherlands, and Netherlands isn't in a trade war with China. Uh, Netherlands public television aired documentary saying even were concerned that China could cut off supplies. So we have a very serious health security problem and national security problem that demands our immediate attention. Right now, though, we are visiting with our regular Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh and also Rosemary Gibson, who is author of an important book, China Rx, Exposing the Risks of America's Dependence on China. And as you would have guessed, uh, Rosemary, we have received a, a number of texts. The first one says, could you uh, please put out a list of all the drugs that you're talking about with harmful ingredients? How many are there? Well, Jack, so I'll just say there's many, many blood pressure medicines that have had to be recalled, and um, that's on an FDA website, and I can send Dr. Cavanaugh a link, and perhaps you can put it up on your website. Okay. So it's a long list, unfortunately. Um, that's the immediate concern, but to find out which drugs are coming from China or have Chinese-made ingredients, some of that's really hard to know because manufacturers don't want to tell us where their products are made or where their ingredients are coming from. In fact, some manufacturers won't even tell the Department of Defense when they are looking to buy medicines for our war fighters. Really? Uh, that's right. Kevin? Well, yeah, that's true. There's been over 50 medications, the blood pressure medicines, that have been withdrawn so far. And it's very difficult to find out where the drugs and the ingredients and the precursors are being made. For example, the article that Zantac had, the carcinogen in it of NDMA, didn't have where it was made or where the precursors came from because I, I would assume because they don't know. But yet it's the same contaminant that uh, exists in the other drugs. So 80% of precursors uh, are coming from China that are used in the United States. The same is true for that of uh, in India. The majority of the precursors are coming from China. And this is a huge problem. On September 10th in the Washington Post, there was an editorial about this problem that was co-authored by Adam Schiff, who's the Democrat representative and chairs the House Intelligence Committee. So this is getting a huge amount of attention, and I cannot underscore the, uh, the importance. And, and I myself am somewhat worried that this can be used as leverage against the United States. And I, and I think others are too, and that's why they call it a national security issue. Now, when you, um, when you that, guys are talking about precursors, is that, uh, is that the inert ingredients in the medication? No, that would be the active ingredient. So the precursor is the active ingredient? Uh, Jack, there's a couple of components. Uh, I'll just add Dr. Kavanaugh. There's, the, there's raw material, raw chemical material, and then there's what they call chemical intermediates. It's a little technical. Mm -hmm. And then those are used to make the what they call the active ingredient. Mm -hmm. It's what makes a medicine a medicine. Wow. You know, the inactive inert things can be starch or whatever that they crunch in to make it a pill. I see. The precursors are the stuff that actually, after you take it and yeah. cook it and do whatever you do in the lab, it becomes the actual medication. And this is, to me, this is a little bit scary. And certainly antibiotics are now almost all totally made in China. And it's a mess. And as a side note, uh, they're not very efficient at it doing this in an environmentally friendly way, and they've got a terrible problem with antibiotic-resistant bacteria in their streams. Fentanyl and opioids is another huge problem. They are also made in China, and they've got very little control on their marketing. They can be practically bought over the internet. Even though they've got some intermediaries, there's not good control on making sure that those opioids do not go into the illegal markets of the United States. Back with Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, Rosemary Gibson is author of the China RX, Exposing the Risks of America's Dependence on China for Medicine. And uh, I guess what are the implications of all this with our current trade war with China, Rosemary? Well, Jack, I think it would be um, highly unlikely that uh, China would uh, do any steps to withhold any medicinal products from the United States. That would be 
a public relations disaster for the country and a black mark that would, would not go away for generations. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, China is still uh, ramping up its pharmaceutical industry and it needs Western companies to do that. It needs their intellectual property, their talent, and so much more. Uh, so I, don't, I think it's unlikely that China would take that step. How concerned should we be? What's well, Jack, I, I, I look at it this way. We should, would we have China control 80% of the world's oil? No. Would, would we have China control 80% of our food supply, say for wheat or corn? Mm -hmm. We pride ourselves on being energy independent, which was helpful after the uh, Saudi oil facilities were attacked. We didn't have to worry about it. So why we have to think of our medicines as a strategic asset, like we do oil, like we do food, diversify our manufacturing base, and to bring some minimal capacity at home to make them. We're talking about medicines to treat superbugs. We're talking about last resort antibiotics to treat deadly infections like sepsis. So uh, this is urgent, and certainly for our military, our veterans, and all of us. Uh, Kevin? Well, yeah, I think you have to plan for the worst. We're not only talking about last resort antibiotics, but actually penicillin. You, you know, this is not good. There has been reports, for example, at March, that a prominent Chinese economist suggested using this as a lever uh, in the trade war. And you now again, I'm kind of, as I said, more of a pessimistic, you know, kind of conspiracy theorist sometimes, but the Chinese state newspaper, uh, Global Times, uh, ran a statement that there is little chance China will weaponize antibiotics to fight against U.S. tariffs. And I don't know, the way I think is when I read that, I think, oh, goodness, they might do it. They're thinking about it. So I think that even though what Rosemary says is absolutely true, that it's probably realistically unlikely to happen, I think we need to plan for the worst. And you don't need to go into any sort of negotiations with this hanging over your head or in the back of your mind that this may happen. You need to negotiate from a position of strength, and this certainly tends to weaken that position. Rosemary? Oh, sure. We should always uh, plan for the worst. We do it in other aspects of our lives with, again, energy and food. We wouldn't uh, find ourselves in this situation with those. Real without that, you cease to function as a country. Okay. Without medicines, you cease to function as a country. Here's an email that says, I'm pleased to have your guests on today. I was on Lovastatin for years, two or three months ago, decided to stop it gradually. Also, the same for uh, another medication generic for, uh, I think it's microzide, uh, for experienced a bit of a headache once in a while, so went back on it. How safe is this blood pressure medicine? She says her blood pressure is not overly high. Also take OTC meclizine periodically for vertigo? I can't, I can't speak to a particular medicine, Jack, and you're um, the person who asked the question. It's a really great question. I'm sure a lot of people are asking it. Uh, it points to the fact that you know, it's unfortunate that here we are in the United States of America and people and their doctors are losing trust in our medicine. That's a terrible place to be. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is uh, there's a company that's started up on the Yale Science Campus, and they're just getting going. They're an online pharmacy, and they're testing every product they sell before they send it out. Mm. And they're, yeah, finding, I, and I, they're find, more, finding that more than 10% of what they test doesn't meet standard. More than 10%. And we, and we, should, we should demand as a public and insurance companies that every single product is independently tested and the results are publicly reported so we know and we don't have to guess. You can't tell what's safe and what's not, that if you go with the name brand product, then the company that's manufacturing it, if it's a large pharmaceutical corporation, has the responsibility of making sure that it's safe. So if something does go awry, if these guys cut corners by going to China and something goes awry, you've got more legal recourse in that situation than you do if you have a generic product, uh, you know, from a company that, who, who knows, it could disappear overnight. So that, I, th I think, 
in some respect, you have to also hold the companies accountable for this problem. It's not necessarily on the consumer side that they, you know, the consumer needs to figure out what's needed to correct this problem or is this drug safe or not. It's the seller that needs to make sure the product is safe, and it's also the manufacturer that needs to do the same. And so that's uh, extremely important. Well, you know, one of the one of the challenges is even if you try to sue Chinese companies operating uh, here or selling product here, they have no assets. There's a chapter in China RX called "Made in China Sue in America." Good luck. Mm. Really? And it was r really uh, quite remarkable. Uh, I quote a gentleman who said, "The way China thinks about this is this way." The reason their products are so cheap is because they assume no liability for them. Wow. And, of course, they have no consumer protections. Right. So this is the high price of cheap drugs, the high price of paying money to cheap manufacturers. You know, I, th I think the American public would be shocked, Jack and Dr. Kavanaugh, to realize that some of their taxpayer money to buy medicines for the military and our veterans is helping to support China's industry while ours is collapsing. Wow. That needs to stop. That sure and it needs to. It really needs to stop now. And plus, we have seniors who are struggling to pay their bills and buying medicines, and to realize some of that money could be going to China again to build their industry, as jobs here are just leaving in droves. We're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who've lost their jobs in a vital industry. And I wrote China RX in part because I want to ensure that we have a vital industry left in this country. I understand there was a recall of an anticoagulant called, is it Valsartan? Oh, that's the blood pressure medicine. That's the one you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. That was a, uh, that's probably the biggest and most extensive recall, and it was worldwide. The company in China that was the biggest problem, they were selling it in 23 countries. Hmm. That, and that shows how narrow the supply chain is. And that's what China wants. China wants to become the pharmacy to the world. And they're doing it through unfair trade practices and killing the other, killing their competitors unfairly. What are the roadblocks that the FDA is uh, encountering in, in safeguarding our medication supply? Well, it's, it's a real problem because, Jack, if, say you and I go to the shopping mall this weekend and we're looking for the cheapest possible T-shirt and we'll go store to store to find one for 25 cents cheaper. We buy it, falls apart in three months, got to go buy a new one. Well, I hate to say it, but that's how a lot of our generic ingredients, they're like com cheap commodities. We're buying them like T-shirts, and we've mm -hmm. got to stop that. So if that's all the FDA has to regulate that's on the market, what can the FDA do if this is what China's selling and what people, uh, companies here that are buying medicines? And we're back, our final segment here. We've got a caller uh, on hold. Rosemary Gibson is with us, uh, and Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. And uh, let's go to the phones. This is Ed. Good morning, Ed. Thanks for calling. Good morning. This is a wonderful subject, and it's a, a subject that we count on our government to protect us from these situations, and that's why we have an FDA, and that's why we have an FTC. I think I find it interesting that in 13 minutes you're going to come on at WBOK with Chris Platt, who will rant about government overreach and government overregulation, but when we have a problem like the vaping or when we have a problem like contamination in our drugs, we expect our government regulators to protect us. We can't have it both ways. And I find it interesting that especially conservative talk radio would, would have this lady on with such an interesting program, but then turn right around and complain about the regulators that we have to have to keep us safe. I'll get off and see what she thinks. All right. What do you say, Rosemary? Sure. Hi, I think this is a, a subject matter that it's not just a regulatory problem. This is, belongs in the arm of our national security, homeland security. We, you know, it's, we need a whole of government of re review of where we, who, who supplies our medicines. It's not just about the quality, it's about supply. Right now, and this was a shocking thing I found from China RX, it's nobody's job in the federal government to know who controls our medicine supply. Mm. So we have to expand this, not just FDA from trying to regulate it, but from a national security point of view, uh, we need a broader uh, engagement of that part of our government. 
Here's a text that says a few years ago on a TV program revealed some kind of pills made in China were basically coated in road paint. I, I'm not sure about that, but it, it certainly is true that uh, some uh, pills that were uh, sold in the United States, they, the capsules were made from gutter oil. Oh, wow. That's oil coming from you know, restaurants that they discard and things like that. It's really quite quite concerning. Now, China is trying to ramp up its quality, but even if China produced the best quality drugs, which it doesn't now, um, would we want to buy them? Mm -hmm. We need to assure that we have some minimal manufacturing capability here at home. And I'll just say to the prior caller, that, that decision is way beyond the scope of the Food and Drug Administration. This has to be a whole government, top levels from a security point of view to ensure we have a safe supply of high quality medicines for every person, every pill, every time. What uh, can your doctor, if anything, can your doctor do? Well, doctors are in a similar situation. Uh, I was at a, in a physician's office at a major hospital and I watched how you know, patients were calling up and his assistant and saying, well, my insurance company now won't cover this other uh, generic blood pressure medicine because I had to get off the other one. <laughs> so I, I feel for doctors who regrettably are in a similar situation as patients. That's why we have to yeah, address this issue at the very highest levels of, of our government. Well, and I think the other thing to realize, Jack, is that it's very important for the doctor to only prescribe a medication if it's absolutely necessary. When you look at antibiotics, up to half of them are unnecessary that are being prescribed. And Kentucky has probably the highest rate in the nation. We're double that of California. So one of the one of the ways to avoid the problems with pills is to make sure you only take the pill when the benefits of the pill are going to outweigh the risks. And that means you don't take one when you don't need it. It's not like, well, I'll just take this medicine to make sure you know, and cover the bases just in case. No, don't do that anymore. Just take it if you need to take the medication. I think that problem started back when they used to, when they started advertising prescription medications on TV, uh, because I think we, the patient, decided what we wanted the doctor to give to us based on the influence of those TV commercials had on us. Well, and that's true. Now, again, stressing, this is very low levels. So if you need the medicine, please take it. The, the chances of you getting harm from this at this point is very small, but being infinitesimally small is still a risk you shouldn't be taking if you don't have to take the medicine. I'm guessing, Rosemary, that uh, the China RX has been receiving uh, a lot of attention here of late. Well, it's a real um, honor, uh, Jack, that China RX is being read by uh, people who need to read it. More people need to read it. It's available on Amazon. And I want to say to your listeners, I wrote this book without any support from anyone. I did it because I care. I care about the health of our country and our future. And we donate proceeds to good causes. So uh, I hope your listeners will um, go to their library and ask for it. It's available on Amazon. Talk about it with colleagues and friends on social media. Talk to your member of Congress saying, why are we bringing medicines from China into the United States? We need to start making our own. Are you working on another book? Uh, no, sir. I'm working on trying to fix this problem. Really? Really? No kidding? So oh, this... yes, sir. Well, I'm hoping there'll be hearings uh, coming up soon in Congress. And the good news is many good people, and I'll say across the uh, political spectrum, are, uh, are seeing this as an urgent problem. I hope that this is a bipartisan issue. It should be. This affects all of us, no matter where, what your beliefs are, and this should unite us as a country to begin to fix it. And kind of in the last minute, what national policy solutions do you think we need to uh, undertake? Uh, the first thing is we need this uh, review by uh, Homeland Security, National Security Council, FDA, DOD, the Department of Defense, and to understand where we are vulnerable and to let everybody the highest levels of government actually know that not to rely on me trying to do you know research on xyz drug but to have a systemic analysis of where we are vulnerable and to keep that going to keep understanding and forecasting our vulnerabilities 